Hello girls, guys, or otherwise. This is Rich, and today I'm going to be doing for our Crystal Pagan Sunday edition. I'm going to actually do a little bibliomancy, and I'm actually going to do this live, or, well, live recorded. Um, yeah. So, I'm actually using Google's random number generator. Uh, I have the Catholic Answer Bible, or the new Catholic Answer Bible. Because I guess the old Catholic Answer Bible didn't answer all the questions. Um, we're just going to get past that. It's a New American uh, Bible revised edition, all that stuff. Anyway, uh, it has 73 books in this Bible. So I'm going to randomize between 1 and 73. I said 73, right? Not 75. I think I said 73. Anyway, we're going to... It's 1 to 73. So, we're going to generate, and this cannot happen. I kid you not, the number that comes up is 69. Nice. Anyway, so, uh, this is this is terrible. Oh, uh, we're going to hell. <laughs> anyway, if it existed... Uh, so that's 63 there, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69 brings us to the first letter of John, right? No, that can't be right. Hold on. Uh, yes, 65, 66, 67, 68, yeah. Yep, yep. First letter for John. Yeah, no, I, I was right. I was right. Okay. So, first letter of John, the 69th book in this Bible, has. Let's see. Oh, geez. Hold on. Still one John. Okay, good. It has five chapters. So, we're going to do. One through five on our random number generator. Come on. Click, click, click. Okay. There we go. Generate. Third chapter. Okay. This should be fun. I'm, I'm having a little fun with this. Um, so, chapter three. Where, where are we at? Where are we at? There we are. Okay. Chapter three has... 24 verses so 1 through 24 and this is just one way that you can do bibliomancy I like to usually just open a book and put my finger on the page and find where it leads and this came up with 12 okay so we're gonna read not only that verse but the surrounding verses and we're gonna see what we can get from uh, from this verse or these collection of verses and we're gonna we're just gonna do some uh, do some digging but anyway this is one way that you can do bibliomancy the way that I usually do it is I open up a book put my finger on up on the page and find whatever it reads and that's what I read the issue with that is that you don't always get the ones in the front or in the back of that book usually you know whenever you open it up it's right in the center so you don't always get the beginnings and endings uh, type of verses. So let's see <sighs> what First John chapter 3 verse 12 has to say for us. Unlike Cain who belonged to the evil one and slaughtered his brother, why did he slaughter him? Because his own works were evil and those of his brother righteous. Okay. Um, I disagree. Um, yeah, because that was not Cain's intention. Uh, he, no. That's not why he slaughtered his brother. Cain brought a, an offering to this deity, this God of the Old Testament, and said, hey, here's my offering to you. However, Abel brought 
the best of the the of what he had i believe it wasn't kane the farmer of livestock and abel was the farmer of uh grain and whatnot but or vice versa either way abel brought the best of the best of what he had to sacrifice it to this deity cain did not cain just gave you know whatever he had you know the some of what he had and said well this should be good enough uh he got jealous because abel had the favoritism of this deity because he gave uh he gave the best of what he had he fa he sacrificed the best of what he had so i do disagree with this with this uh this verse um and then it says do not be amazed then brothers if the world hates you we know that if we have passed from death to life because we love our brothers Whoever does not love remains in death. Everyone who hates his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer has eternal life remaining in him. Okay. Um, I have a contentious relationship with my brother. Um, there is hatred there. Uh, minimal. However, um, yeah, I would not say that that makes me a murderer. I don't wish ill on him at all. He's the father of my nephew. I would never. However, do I want to be in the same room with him? Absolutely not. I think he's a pig-headed little, you know, big asshole. Yeah, so... Fundamentally disagree with this verse. I think it is insane. Um, and I, I've gone all the way to uh, verse uh, two and through verse fifteen. So for those of you who are following along, that's where I'm at. Um, yeah, <sighs> I don't agree that eternal life or eternal comfort or any type of eternal way of being is determined necessarily on how you feel about somebody who may or may not have wronged you in the past so saying to somebody that because they hate somebody or dislike somebody or does not have necessarily any love towards somebody does not mean they are a murderer it means that they care about themselves and their own well-being as well as others around them uh who they may or may not love so by that i mean i would not want to put somebody there uh in between my myself and my brother uh say if a friend of mine uh went with me to see my brother i would not want to want to put them in that situation where they have to play mediator i don't even like my own mother being in that situation of mediator and she has clearly said i am not doing dealing with this anymore and good for her um so no i disagree that it, it does not make you a murderer because you you have hatred for another person now this again you, you're making blank, blanket statements about something that should have a lot of nuance because there are some people that do horrific acts to another individual another person and you are, are should not be telling somebody how they need to feel about that person that individual if somebody ran into me with a car like as i was walking across the street and they did it deliberately i don't have love for them i want them to to suffer every little bit imaginable if they're going to 
you know, break my body, I'm going to break their life. Um, you know, I, I get what I need to, and, um, I, I will get what I have to get in order to survive. Um, so there's this nuance there that if somebody maliciously, um, goes against you that, and, and in this, it says that you are supposed to still love them. Yeah, you know, that's all well and good whenever the somebody that you're talking about has taken a $10 bill out of your wallet. It's another thing if they hit you with a fucking car. Or if they are coming after you to murder you. You know, or they have such passive-aggressive tendencies that it makes you... Uh, feel sick to even think about seeing them in a room together or in, in a room with you. Yeah, there is a lot of nuance here that is not being explained and they're just putting a blanket statement on all of this and it's very dangerous. So I think that we need to approach this with a little bit more nuance um, and not be telling lies about what happened in Genesis and whenever we're talking about things in 1st John that's towards the end of the freaking Bible so yeah if you're reading the Bible from cover to cover it might help that you remember things from Genesis because they'll come up again in 1st John because the explanation that they give here about Cain and Abel not true not how everything happened um, Cain just did not give the best of what he had and therefore did not get the favor of this deity. But Abel gave the best of what he had and, you know, gained favor and ended up paying for that with their life. So, yeah, um, incorrect on the verse, uh, incorrect on the, uh, the way of putting this verse forward and uh, extrapolating on this. Uh, I think that it is dangerous to tell people that you must love uh, an individual or care for an individual who has hurt you or wronged you in the past. It is dangerous for that. Um, it can also um, reinforce horrible habits that individuals have. Um, such as those individuals who are um, abusive in nature or in, in a way that uh, is not healthy for other people to be around. So I think putting people in those situations where you might have somebody that is not playing by the same rules um, can take advantage of you. And I think that is a dangerous situation. Guard yourself. Guard your, your own way of being and have a level head, a logical mind whenever you are interacting with another human being. Um, I went on a long tangent there and I did not, I, I meant this to be a nice learning lesson, um, not a, um, not a situation where we, you know, negate or throw out a, an entire verse or a cluster of verses. <sighs> So, yeah, I, I disagree with this. Let me know what your thoughts are on this uh, verse, this collection of verses, this little cluster of verses. Um, by leaving a comment below, while you're down there, go ahead and hit the like button or the dislike button if you dislike this content. Um, you know, leave a comment why you dislike this content or, you know, your thoughts or feelings on this particular video. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. What else, what else, what else? Uh, hit that bell notification, make sure you're subscribed, all that good stuff. Um, and until Tuesday, whenever we have our Terror Talk Tuesday, I will catch you all later. Um, may you have love, hugs, and ladybugs. And may I also, for those who are in the U.S. of A, um, happy 4th of July, happy Independence Day to you. Um, I hope you are all safe and uh, with people that you love that you can stand and tolerate as I am today. So anyway, uh, yeah, don't feel any obligation to, you know, 
love somebody that has wronged you. Guard yourself, be smart, and until next time, may you have love, hugs, and ladybugs. Bye-bye.